Hey everyone, it is Elise Cabaret here, songwriting coach at Daughter, here to help you write and record the songs of tomorrow. If you're a songwriter and you would like tips and advice on how to improve your songwriting, please subscribe to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about one of my favorite elements of songwriting, and that is dynamics. Now, dynamics is something that is often overlooked by beginner songwriters or even quite experienced songwriters. And the reason why I love teaching dynamics so much is because I know just how powerful they can be at improving your songs. They can create more drama, more emotion and make your song more interesting. And the best part about dynamics is they don't actually require you to do much extra creative work. You don't have to write any new musical sections. Does this sound like something you wanna learn? Let's jump in. First of all, what are dynamics exactly? Well, most of the time when we think of dynamics, we think about volume, so how loud or soft your song is, these fluctuations in volume throughout your song. But dynamics can also refer to the arrangement of the song, so how many instruments are playing at any given time. There might be sections that are quite sparse, where it's just vocal and piano, for example. And there might be other sections that are really busy, where you've got a whole band playing behind you. So these are also dynamics. Another example of dynamics is how you perform the song. So as a vocalist, you have the choice to perform your song with lots of rich emotion and intensity, or you can perform it and be quite straight and reserved in your delivery. All of these different components affect the dynamics of a song. Is this making sense so far? Basically, dynamics are a kind of energy. So how high or low the energy is within the song at any given time. We can use this energy to play with emotion, create drama. We can also use it to create a contrast between sections, for example, between a verse and a chorus. And most importantly, we use this energy to allow the song to gain momentum and carry the listener through from start to finish, holding their attention. I would say all these things are pretty important to songwriting, wouldn't you? That's why it's important for you as a songwriter to pay attention to these things as you're writing a song. In my last video, I talked about something called the hit song formula. So if you haven't seen that video, I would suggest you go ahead and give it a watch before you continue with this one, because we're going to build on that knowledge. You should be able to just click on the, the little card up here. Part of the reason why the hit song formula is so successful is because of the way the energy flows throughout the song. There's a very distinct energy curve. So if you take a look at this graphic, you can see how during the intro and the verses, the energy is quite low. It starts off quite low. As we hit the pre-chorus, it starts to build. And when we hit the chorus, it's quite high. Then it drops back down in the interlude, allowing the song to breathe for a minute and then gradually building that energy back up until we hit the next chorus. Then depending on our bridge, we might choose a bridge that's quite low in dynamics, or we might choose a bridge that's quite high and intense in dynamics, depending on what the song needs. After the bridge, we typically have our double chorus at the end, which is our highest energy section. This is where we're throwing everything we've got at the song, our big finish. You can see how this energy curve takes the listener on a journey, building and building and building until the end of the song. This is quite a formulaic approach to using dynamics in songwriting and it works really well. So it's a really great place to start. But as we know, all songs are different. So in the next part of this video, I'm going to give you a few different ways you can use dynamics creatively in your songwriting. This first technique is one of my absolute favorites and it's really useful for when you've got a song that sounds quite repetitive and same samey, particularly at the end of the song where you want to repeat a lot of choruses. So what you do is where you have those repeating choruses is instead of playing them all up here, we take that first one, usually after a bridge, and we bring the dynamics right down and we sing this chorus really quietly, remove a bunch of the other instruments and just have this really soft, intense chorus that you're, you're singing. This is going to immediately grab your listeners attention because they're expecting you to sing the chorus how you have been singing it throughout the song right up here. Also, because you've brought the dynamics right down, You've got heaps of room to build it back up again, creating the opportunity for a big, powerful finish. Because remember, songwriting is all about contrast. The lower the dynamics are to begin with, the bigger that finish is going to sound. Does that make sense? A really good example of this is in uh, Vance Joy's Riptide. Closest thing to Michelle Pfeiffer that you've ever seen. Oh, lady, running down to the riptide, taking away to the dark side. This 
this next technique is quite common and really, really powerful in your slower tempo ballad songs. A big problem for songwriters who are trying to keep their song interesting all the way throughout is that dreaded second verse. That's the moment in the song where listeners kind of make a decision whether they want to listen to the rest of the song or check out. So it's really important for us to try and grab their attention and make sure they know that this song is interesting. Now we typically do this by introducing something new, but as this is a second verse, the listeners have already heard this verse melody before. So we can't change the section melodically, but we can change the dynamics. So what you'll hear a lot of songwriters do or arrangers do is they'll have something like uh, just vocals and piano through the first verse, pre-chorus and chorus. And then when they go into the second verse, they introduce the rhythm section. So the drums and the bass. And what this does is it gives the song an energy lift at a very critical moment. A really good example of this in action is The Scientist by Coldplay. Lastly, if you've got a song that is quite anthemic and uh, quite singable and you want to get some crowd participation going, getting them singing along with you or clapping along with you, try taking out all of the other instruments except the vocals and the drums. This is basically the universal cue for the audience to join in. A good example of this is I Wanna Rock and Roll All Night by Kiss. And there you have it. I hope you're feeling like you've got a better understanding of how to use dynamics in your songs to make your songs more powerful and more interesting. As always, if you've got any questions for me or anything you'd like to add that maybe I've missed in this video, please write them in the comments. That's it from me today. I hope you're having a wonderful week. Happy songwriting, stay creative, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>